Hi friend, I am Harish Kambale. In this video, I am going to explain about mineral nutrition and passive absorption. Mineral nutrition in plants. A mineral is a naturally occurring substance represented by chemical formula. Example, minerals are hydrogen H, carbon C, nitrogen N, phosphorus P, potassium K. All these are called as minerals, calcium, magnesium, molybdenum, these are all the 40 mineral elements obtained by the analysis of plant ash. From the plant ash, there are maximum 40 mineral elements obtained by the scientist and in which some are essential and some are non-essential. Essential elements means those elements which required by plants for growth and development while non-essentials are not required or required in a very very small quantity so they are called as non-essential plants not only require carbon dioxide and water for preparation of food material in the photosynthesis but along with the carbon dioxide and water plant required minerals for preparation of food so minerals are categorized into two that is micro elements and macro elements and micro elements macro elements means those minerals which require more than 100 more than 100 milligram per liter of water called as micro, macro elements macro and micro means less than 100 milligram per liter water so plants requires if the requirement of elements are more than 100 milligram per liter in the one gram there is a thousand milligram so one tenth gram per liter requirement of such elements are called as micro elements and those are less than 100 milligrams per liter called as micro elements and these are calcium hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur phosphate potassium magnesium calcium ferrous these elements are called as micro elements while uh, macro elements while micro elements are boron uh, molybdenum zinc cuprous molybdenum as well as chlorines these are called as micro because they require less quantity micro and macro both are required both elements are required for plants for growth and development these are elements are called as essential elements and these elements are absorbed by the plants by two ways that is passive and active passive absorption and active absorption so the types of absorptions mineral absorptions are two passive absorption and active absorption in the passive absorption there are two main methods out two main ways by which plants absorb mineral elements first one is outer and apparent free space theory and second one is ion exchange theory in this ion exchange theory again there are four ways by which the plant root absorb mineral nutrition the contact exchange theory carbonic is the contact exchange theory carbonic acid exchange theory and donor equilibrium mass flow these are called as ion exchange theory because plant absorb minerals in the form of ions and ions are anions and cations anions are negative and cations are positive so uh, in the this theory ion exchange theory the mineral elements are absorbed by the plant in the form of ions the anions and cations of the plant cells are exchanged with the anions or cations of equivalent charges it is called as ion exchange and the another mineral salt absorption is 
actively active absorption so the difference between active absorption and passive absorption is in the passive absorption there is a no need of energy so passive we can say that passive absorption means when the absorption of mineral salt takes place without any expenditure of metabolic energy means atp and simply by the diffusion into the plant cell it is called as passive absorption so in the passive absorption there is a no energy required for absorption while in the active absorption some energy from the plant is used utilized for absorption of minerals from the soil so these are the two ways by which plant absorb salts from the soil in the passive absorption there is a no need of energy then there are first one method is outer and apparent free space theory this theory say that salt absorption takes place through the intimate contact of the root system with the soil colloids or soil solution suppose these are the root plant root and these are the soil along with the water in the soil uh, in the soil there are capillary water presence and in that water there are salt dissolved when there are more concentrated soil salts in the water or in the soil these uh, salts absorb by diffusion process in the root so this way the salt enter into the roots called as outer and apparent free space theory and the second ion exchange theory there are there are first one is contact exchange theory it was proposed by jenny and overstreet in 1939 according to this theory the ion are transferred from the soil particle to the root or vice versa without passing into free solution it is well known fact that the ion absorb electrostatically to the surface of the root cell or clay particles are not held tightly but due to thermal agitation each of them oscillates within a small volume of the space it is termed as a oscillation volume when the oscillations volume of two ions with some same charge overlap one ion is exchanged with the other this process has been called contact exchange the contact exchange of ion takes place not only between the soil particle but also between soil particle and the root surface in this diagram there are this is a root and this is a clay micelle means soil particle this is a soil particle and this is a root so contact exchange theory says that in the root there are this proton is attached or contacted to the root and to the clay particle there are potassium ion is in contact root there are proton and clay micelle or soil particle there are potassium ions contacted and they are not fixed they are not hold tightly but they are oscillate and when these two con ions come in contact they exchange itself means potassium goes to this contact surface and proton goes to this contact surface so these ions are exchanged between soil and the root so this theory is called as the contact the contact exchange theory because there is a exchange of ions between root and clay micelle second ion exchange theory is carbonic acid exchange theory according to this theory the soil solution play an important role in exchange of ion by providing a medium the theory explain that carbon dioxide release carbon dioxide release during respiration of root cell during respiration of root cell combined with the water from the carbonic acid combined with the water form carbonic acid in the soil solution carbonic acid associate with 
uh, dissociate with hydrogen and anions so these are dissociate with hydrogen and anions carbonic acid a cation k plus or potassium absorbed on the k micelle may be exchanged with the proton of the soil solution this cation potassium may diffuse to the root surface in exchange of proton ions the cations may also be absorbed on the root cells in exchange as ion pair with bicarbonate so in this theory what happened the root and this is a clay there are there are distance some suppose plant root require potassium so how can it absorb by carbonic acid exchange theory root release carbon dioxide which is produced through respiration and this carbon dioxide uh, combined with uh, h2o which is present in the soils and for carbonic acid this carbonic acid is again a uh, dissociate or uh, break down into proton and anion then this proton is uh, and here potassium this proton is exchanged with the potassium and here the anions and potassiums come together and these when plant absorb minerals that time this potassium enter into the root so this way potassium ions enter into the root from the soil so this theory is that carbonic acid exchange theory third ion exchange theory is a donon equilibrium donon equilibrium the fixed or indivisible ions play an important role according to this theory there are certain pre existing ions inside the cell which cannot diffuse outside through membrane such ions are called as fixed and indivisible ions suppose these are fixed and indivisible ions b and d they cannot go outside outside this one is outside and this is inside of the cell such ions are fixed or indivisible ions the outer membrane is impermeable to fixed ions however the cell membrane is permeable to both cation and ion presence in the external medium this b cannot go outside because they are fixed this d cannot go outside because this is fixed if the cell is immersed in a external salt solution and on the inner side of the membrane there are fixed anions the moment of the equal number of anion and cation takes place until the equilibrium donon equilibrium between cell shape and external medium is reached here the additional cation will be moved from the external medium to the balanced negative changes of the fixed anions on the inner side of the membrane thus the cation concentration in the cell shape would be greater than the external medium this balance or equilibrium is called as donon equilibrium the donon equilibrium theory explain the accumulation of ions against the concentration gradient without the participation of metabolic energy in this theory what happen suppose this is the cell and these are the cell this is the cell in the cell there are some fixed ions and this fixed ion suppose this is a b uh, it suppose this is plus they cannot go outside but equal amount of anions enter into the cell suppose this is the negative ions which is fixed in the inside the cell and this is positive so extra positive ions absorbed by the cell or here extra negative ion enter into the cell here extra positive ion enter into the cell but this cannot go outside this cannot go outside so extra amount of minerals enter into the cell so up to the equilibrium so it is called as donon equilibrium fourth one is a mass flow according to this theory an increase in transpiration increase in the absorption of ion this theory say that when the transpirations the loss of water in the form of vapor through aerial part of plant these are the transpiration takes place and because of transpiration root absorb water so along with the water minerals and elements absorb by the root so this theory is called as mass flow because minerals absorb in the mass 